I, tonight I thought I'd do a, a mainstreamer. Uh, I think everybody's heard of a black ghost, Herb Welsh. Uh, in the 1920s, this guy actually started out as a, a taxidermist. And then he got his own business and became a fishing guide. And then from there, he started tying and he tied up. His most famous fly is, is a black ghost, but he's responsible for any number of uh, streamer patterns, cup suptic, Kennebago, there's a number of them. They're not very prevalent out west here. There's a few of us that do them. They're still very prevalent and very heavily fished in the east, eastern Canada and the northeastern United States. Why is that, Bertie? Any idea? When they, these were developed mainly for landlocked salmon and, and big brookies, both of which we don't have a whole lot of here. Mm -hmm. And they still, they still fish a lot for landlocked salmon out there and, and big brookies. But the thing of it is, is that you can take these and reduce them to a workable size for anywhere where you think the, the fish are going on minnows. The hook that I'm tying on here right now is, is an L87 size 4. Uh, <laughs> in your terms, in that country, this would be considered a coronament. <laughs> This is. Uh, Would you fish something like this on Marine Lake? On Marine Lake, certainly. I think Alan Grombacker was a member of this club at one point. He has a whole book of streamers that were fished in Marine Lake. This is. I don't know if we can. I don't know, where's the camera? Up, here? up, there we go. So I'll try and get it on my finger so you have an idea. This is probably. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, I guess. If they were going to tie streamers out in Maine and eastern Canada, this is the size of hook that they would start going for. Yeah. Yeah. So at any rate, we digress here. If something happens and you're not sure, please speak up. I would rather talk and work. We had a little fun just recently on the forum on, on the club's webpage with a little game we were playing with streamers and my daughter and I kind of got into it and it blossomed and I guess there's some interest. The tails and streamers should be about one and a half to keep the gap of the hook. The tag that I put on the first, the silver thing at first, you'll, if you start looking at a lot of streamers on a lot of pages, you'll see them anywhere from down around the back of the hook to, well, they don't start till where I put that tail on. They're, they're on they're no, there doesn't seem to be any hard and fast rule as to where it should and shouldn't be. If I was tying a streamer with anything other than black for the body, I would uh, be tying with white thread right now. They used white thread underneath to... Okay, Aaron, you're supposed to tell me when I screw up. They use, uh, they use white thread underneath the floss to maintain the color of the floss. If you put black thread underneath, like on the uh, gray ghost, if you put black thread underneath that kind of uh, 
um, orange colored floss, it'll actually change the color. It'll darken it. You really notice it when it's wet too. Some of the guys have taken to putting tinsel underneath the body. There's a guy named. Would that be a rule? Basically, if you're using floss or anything like that, you should actually be tiring like they lift it white? Uh, and I'm talking about any flies any in general, flies in general. Yeah. yes yeah um, it's something to consider Dennis uh, if you've if you if you've <laughs> if you've thrown a fly in the water with a floss body and seen how dramatic the change is you very quickly realize that there is some merit to putting white thread underneath it and and. I don't know, like if you're doing a, a dubbing, I don't know that it would change the color of the dubbing that much, but if you're working with a material that will bleed color, then I would consider putting white or some kind of tinsel underneath it. Uh, you know, uh, one that comes to mind is kind of Mirage. You see a lot of times you see in pattern books that they're using white, and it, it makes sense when you start talking with that black or different colored thread they do through the through the process and stuff like that. Yeah, it, change, it will change the color. So there's the part that we forgot. So we'll just whack that on there. There was an article in Fly Tire not too long ago on putting tinsel under a duck body. Well, it shines through. Yeah. It'll show through. There's a guy out on the East Coast that's a salmon guide. His name is Tanner, and he uh, he's putting a lot of uh, mirage and stuff underneath all the bodies on his flies. Now he does a lot of this kind of stuff, and he's putting a lot of silvers and pearls and stuff under. And he swears by them. He says it's really changed the uh, the way they work. When you're when you're doing wings and tails, try to use a schlappen or uh, tails and throats, rather, try to use a slap, and your throat shouldn't be any more than half the, the length of the hook. So getting to this point is easy peasy, not a fun start. So you need to find a, if you're going to do this, you need to find a source for feathers. And these are from a place in uh, Michigan, the guy's Feathers MC, John, some of you guys may know who he is, I don't know. Uh, he actually has some of Kerry Stevens' old stock feathers. And he went out to find a source. <laughs> And he found the source in the egg laying industry. These, these are the roosters out of the egg laying industry. And they, they kill them and they pet food them. Well, before they pet food them, him and a uh, uh, big name fly company out, in the, uh, out east there decided they'd buy them up and, and, uh, and use them for, for this. And what's happened is is that, or what happened to, the, to this business is was that Mets and all of these big name companies came along and the fly tires were demanding longer, nicer feathers and the other thing that they wanted gone was now, it's hard to see in here but you can see the web in the center of that feather. Well if you take a look at an expensive cape, dry fly cape, you won't find any web. It's all been bred out of it. So streamer guys were hard up to find feathers that would actually work for what they wanted to do. Along came Whiting, and I brought along some of his just so that you can see. These are readily available, but you have to buy his American Rooster line. He has, he has a number of different lines, and they're all bred for certain applications. And these are readily available and, and good for, for this kind of application. So, 
You go into your cape. Now I've got to remember. I always do this in my lap. And this is going to be tough for me. You go into your cape and find a set. And now we're working in pairs, okay? So I'm going to put four wing feathers on this this fly. See, so you, you want them matched. You take one from the, one side from the left side of the cape, one side from the right side of the cape, and, and you try to match them. When it works out right, they've all got a nice curve. You hold it up like this. If it if the curve is like that, then it's it's all good to go. But some of these feathers, you hold them up and they'll just droop like that. Is <laughs> no good for nothing. It's not not good for nothing. So this is good to go. So you take your feather, put them up against the hook. This is too long. You want about a quarter length longer than the hook shank. So on one quarter of the hook shank beyond is the length of your wing. I just happen to make the tail about that long. So that to the end of that tail is about where I'm going to put that wing. So now I'm about right. So you, you, you get one, one set like that. And then this set, the way I do it, there's no hard and fast rules here, the way I do it. I usually put them on my leg because your leg's nicely curved. But I'll take this set, which is now nice. I'll cut the fluff off the bottom so I can tell the difference between the two sets and I'll take one feather. And I'll bring it over. onto this set. And where is the... <laughs> this is not easy. I'll bring it over onto this set and then I'll, I'll hold them and using my thumbnail I'll go in there and make them all the same. Now I know which one my master is because I cut the fluff off. A bugger if you're doing this and you mix them all up and then you got to figure out which ones are which again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Been there, done that here? No, never. Mm -hmm. Also takes me about an hour to find my four wing hackles and my wing feathers. Not like so, you, you just pick them out. <laughs> so you get to this point now. You got four feathers and you you don't you don't put them on one set at a time. Like, you don't take two feathers and put them on and take two more. you got to put them together. So, a while back, I found a thing online called Streamers List. The Streamers List, Streamers List, doesn't matter. It's a free site, and it's huge. Like, there's probably 1,500 members or more now. But I started watching that site almost every day because, obviously, I was interested. Pretty soon I realized that if you watch it enough, those old buggers on there, well, they'll give stuff away. So one day the discussion came up, what do you do to put your wings together? What do you use? Well, we, we, we use Sally Hansen's, so you run out and you buy a Sally Hansen's. Well, it doesn't work worth a damn. So then you go back there and you say, well, you're full of crap. Sally Hansen's doesn't work worth a damn. And they say, oh, no, no, you've got to put it out and let it get thick. And, uh, what's that? Yeah. What? you, you got to put it out, you got to take the top off and let it get thick. And, and by thick, I mean thick. And once you get it so that it's nice and thick, you just apply a tiny little bit at the base of your feather. You can't see it, but there's just a tiny little drop there. And you, you put them together. Make a yad, get up and come up. It's a lot easier on me. Put them together, give them a little squeeze. Now, if you've got it thick enough, within about 10 seconds, you've got, uh, see if I can get just one step, you've got a, a wing that's not going to come apart. <laughs> the, the other, what happens is, is if it's not thick enough, they won't stick together. The other thing that happens is, is that if you put cement on that's too thin, it's like oil on water, it just whoosh out into your feather. So when you get done, yeah, you got your feathers stuck together. But when you tie them on the hook, you got this great gob of glue on the front. And, you know, your beautiful fly that you're working on looks like something that the dog dragged in off the street. Yeah, I did. 
So I guess, I guess the point is, is that if you get an interest in this, you, you go onto some of these club pages, you get into their forum page. Now I know, I took a quick look before I came tonight at the streamers list. Do they call it forums? Or they, call, they call it discussions. So you get into their discussions, there's almost a thousand discussions in there. So if you're wanting to learn anything, I dare say you could find it there. The other thing that comes out on those discussion groups is where to get materials. And if, it, you know, if you're, a, it doesn't matter whether you're a streamer tire or a dry fly tire, find a, a club that has the same interest and get into their forum pages. And this one here discovered the Nova Scotia Fly Time Forum this week. She's losing sleep. It's a great site. It's a great site. You get in there and you, 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 can, you can get all kinds of stuff out of there. So the other thing that comes out is that the jungle cock. Now, these flies, you can fish them with or without jungle cock. I, you know. There's a fellow named Bob Petty that's a very, very well-known uh, streamer tire out in that area, neck of the woods. He, he wrote on, on the other day that he was tying an Alley's favorite, which is a full-dress streamer. He did a beautiful job. He sat back and he was getting ready to send it off to the guy that he tied it for. He forgot to put the jungle cock on it. He doesn't tie with jungle cocks. He, 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 what he does is he paints eyes on. And there's a lot of merit to painting an eye on a fly. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with tying these things. Leave the jungle cock off, if that's the way you roll, and paint an eye on it. In the... So what did you just do there? Okay, now I, I took a jungle cock eye off and I put another drop of cement on it. Okay. On the full pad? No. Just no. Just on the stem? Just down with that little, you know how they got that little bit of white underneath the eye? Yep. I put it there. I like to put it there. Some guys, Darren McEachern was a member of this club. Darren takes his needle and goes right across the whole feather, and then he puts it on. Well, he's got steadier hands than I got. Once that's on that feather, it's not coming off. Mm -hmm. If you put it on just at the bottom, you can lift it off, and no <clears throat> harm done. But if you slather it on the whole thing, you got problems. And I'm working with a good jungle cock eye. If I was working with a poor jungle cock eye, you can repair them by putting it, putting the Sally Hansons on the back of the whole feather, take a split eye, <coughs> put it on the whole feather, and then just gently draw it through thumb and forefinger. It'll pull it together. It'll never be a shadow box fly, but it'll certainly be a good fishing fly. I mean, fish, it doesn't know whether it's got a pack in it or not. And you can repair an awful lot of jungle cock eye. And there's an interesting thing going around now. I haven't tried it yet, but Ron Lucas is another tire that's very well known. You can go onto his page and find it. He's repairing his jungle cock eyes now with hot glue. And he just, it's unreal the results he's getting. All he does is take the, your wife's craft glue, okay? He heats it up over a candle or something. He's got a little tiny piece of metal, drips it on there, puts it on the feather, sets it down, it never comes apart. And they come together real nice. So I think it's something that's worth looking into. I just haven't had time to do it yet. <laughs> but it's, it would be nice if you could make uh, uh, poor jungle cock cape stretch. Because there certainly is, there's a big difference in prices, and we won't get into that, but there's a big difference in prices of, between good jungle cock capes and bad ones. And with more and more success, they're pen raising them now. There's quite a few guys around that are. So when, you, when you're done, you've got a wing that's built with an eye. And the one important thing to remember is it doesn't matter how many feathers you use in this wing, the stem of the feather, the curl, or whatever you want to call it, they've all got to be lined up. 
So the next fly when I'm building, I'm going to build one, two, three, four, five, six feathers. No, one, two, three, four, eight feathers. So four on each side. I better have each one all lined up or it's going to look like heck. If I've got them out of kilter, then it, nothing sits right. So we'll get this one done. It's only supposed to take a minute. This is taking an hour. So this is a main streamer, Dennis. So it really doesn't matter. Well, that's interesting. Most people put their glasses on. Oh, God, see. no. You just took yours on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I can't see. I can't see with the things on. Oh, that's oh, that's it reminds me of he closes his eyes before he goes. <laughs> So main streamers are tied with the wings pretty much on top of the hook. And on that little thread that we were playing around with on the forum, that's how everybody really would like to have done them. My daughter did that. What I didn't, what I didn't post on the forum was she phoned me when I critiqued her fly called her grasshopper and I says, you know me, I says, it looks like your, your wings are a dart thrown at a dartboard. Come in right and like, me. no, no, no. If you're going to put the wings on the streamer, you want the, the, the wings to follow the body. You, you don't want to put them up too high because when these things are cast or pulled through the water, you want everything to come together to form a silhouette. We're trying to imitate a fish, a bait fish, so we need them to come together. If they're splayed out this way, there's nothing wrong with that because then they do this. Okay, and, and guys will tie them on purpose like that, an open wing. But you don't want them this way, you don't want the wing up this way. It's not going to work right. So that's a real simple one. That's Black Ghost. Simple says you. <laughs> simple. Well, when you see Barry do it, though, it does look simple. Like, <coughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah, not so much. Well, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. No, when you're doing them, it ain't dumb. <laughs> so any, any way that we can direct any conversation about this while I'm messing around with this other one? Can you zoom the camera in somebody so that we can take a closer look at that on the screen? Sure. Mm -hmm. I'll just lose one of my hands aren't in the way. There you go. So once you get that uh, Stanley Hansen to that thickness, it will stay that thickness? Well, it get harder after that? It gets harder, but if you add a couple of drops of uh, uh, acetone to it, it'll thin it down. Okay. It'll thin it down, but I, the camera, I don't think the camera will show it, but like you can see, see, see how it's stranding? <laughs> It's it's actually stranding. It it like 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 the brush is used there. See, it's got to be like that. It's got to be like that. Conversely, if this one here is is the one that we use to put on the heads, okay? So it's nice. See, and like you you run down, and you buy one every once in a while. What you do is if your wife is buys the stuff. You go out and buy a couple bottles of clear and say, honey, you should coat your fingernail polish afterwards and it stays longer. And as she gets down to about half a bottle, steal it. And then when she comes looking for it, say, I don't know where the hell it went. You know, now, now it's stealing her eyelashes. Come on now. <laughs> and she got really mad when I used her pantyhose for booty eyes. Now you're taking your big fingernails. That's right. That, that booby bit was good on the weekend. I liked yeah. that. I had, I had lots of fun with that. Okay. Pass it around? Sure, pass it around. It, it, the head's wet, but that's okay. It, nothing will happen to it. I'm sorry? The two, what's the side? The left side and the right side? Yeah. You've got three feathers on each side, and you do them separately. Mm -hmm. And they get aligned only at the very end when you put them on the hook. That's right, that's right. The other thing that's helpful is if you're going to get involved in doing this, I didn't do it with that one because it's an easy one, but the other thing that's helpful is when you assemble your wings, 
Like I, I showed you how I cut the fluff off of one so I can tell the difference. Once, once they're all glued together, once you bring them up to the hook and set them up, cut all the stems off dead even. Okay? So when you go to tie them on, you'll see guys trying to match up the back of the wing to make sure they're both the same length. If, you're ha if you got it put together in your hand properly and you cut the stems off dead even, you shouldn't have to go through that. You should just be able to tie it on and away you go.